God is good, amen. amen. It's good to be in the Lord this morning. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. If you want the Bible, lift your hands and when the brothers will go around. It's good to follow along. ago to bring a message and I know it's from the Lord because I had a, a message that was laid in my heart to share and you know this morning as I was having a time of prayer this morning I thought Lord is this message for me is it for you you know the enemy tried to come in but you know as I was praying brother William he put a, a photo on the group and it just confirmed the message. It was when the woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment, that she would be healed. And I knew it was for, not for me, but it was from the Lord this morning. And you know, it's a, you know, a bit like a title or a theme to the message, is don't give up in a hopeless situation. That we have hope in Jesus. Amen. That we go through, we must come directly right to Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Amen. Now you've got your Bibles. You've turned to the book of Luke. Chapter 8. And we're going to be reading from verse 40 to 56. A bit of a long reading that won't be long. Now as we're finding it, again, you have a time of prayer for me this morning. That I would appear and the Lord would appear. I would disappear. Father God, they just come through this morning, my Lord. Lord, I just pray, my Father God, this morning, my Jesus. The Lord, that you just use me. My sin, I say, with your grace and your mercy, my Lord, this morning. The Lord, Father God, that you speak into people's lives and hearts, my Lord, in this place, my Father God. Lord, in a hopeless situation that we think we're in, my Lord. Lord, we have hope in you, my Lord, this morning, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray, my Jesus. Move the power of your Holy Spirit, my Lord. Lord, I ask you to pray. In the wonderful, precious name of Jesus. Amen. And all God's children says, Amen. Brother William, you want to read that scripture out? Nice and loud, please. So it was, when Jesus returned, that the multitude welcomed him, and they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had only daughter about twelve years of age. She was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having a of blood for 12 years, who had spent all of her livelihood on physics, could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately the blood was stopped. And Jesus says, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him says, Master, the multitudes press against you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus says, Someone touched me, for I have perceived the power going out from me. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she was trembling and falling down before them. She declared to him, in the presence of all the people, reasoning with him. She had touched him and how she has healed immediately. Thank you, Lord. And he says to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has now made you well. Now go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone from the ruler of the synagogue's house said to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, 
He answered them, saying, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go into except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. Now all wept, cried, and mourned for her. But he says, Do not weep. She is not dead, but merely sleeping. They all ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, took the little girl in his hand, saying, Little girl, arise. Then the spirit returned, and she arose immediately. He made a command in that she will be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished by what he charged. Let them know, no one, what had happened. Amen. You know, about my long reading this morning, I won't be long this morning. You know, in verse 40, it says that, that Jesus, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting on him. Just to give you a little background of what's happening here, Jesus is on his death of ministry and he's, he's healing the sick, doing many miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, in a couple of chapters just before this, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Now, leprosy in the Bible was look, 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 something like sin. You know, it's uncurable. And if you had this, you couldn't speak to anyone. You had to, you had to say two metres apart from everyone. It was a hopeless situation. And yet the leper came to Jesus, and Jesus touched him and healed him in an instant. Another instant was the centurion who came to Jesus. He came to Jesus, heal my servant. Now the servant wasn't with him. He was in a different place. But the centurion says... Heal him just by your word. And Jesus said, I've not found great faith in this. And he healed him. A widow, son, died. Now the widow obviously must have lost her husband. Now she's lost her son. In a hopeless situation. Yet Jesus says, have compassion on this woman. And touched the casket. And the son rose back to life. Amen. Amen. Another incident was when they're going across that Jesus and the disciples is going across the water to the east side of Galilee, and as they were on the water, a storm arised, and the disciples was frightened; they were scared, and yet Jesus was in the boat sleeping. But you know, just before this, Jesus says, "Let's cross over to the other side." That was Jesus' promise that we're going to cross over to the other side. But the disciples were scared. They were frightened. And they go and wake Jesus up and says, Lord, do you not care that we're perishing? And Jesus says, Where is your faith? Only believe. And Jesus calmed the storm. And one more incident is, is just before this Jesus heals a demon possessed man. This man was enchained. This man would have been hopeless, excommunicated out of the village. And yet the demon-possessed man came to Jesus and Jesus healed the demon-possessed man. The point that I'm making just before I get into it is God is sovereign over the sick. He is sovereign over distance. He is sovereign over death. He is sovereign over the natural. And he's sovereign over the supernatural. Amen. Amen. So when we get into this, and this is why the people is waiting on Jesus because they're hearing what Jesus is doing in people's lives. And then we see this, a man called Jairus. He was a synagogue leader. He was a ruler. This man would have been well known, well respected, well educated. And yet he comes to Jesus because a tragic has happened in this man's life. His 12 year old daughter is at the point of death. But you know, a tragic situation brings this man to his knees. Because when it says, when, 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 when Jairus comes to Jesus, he says it falls at Jesus' feet. He humbled himself 
before the Lord. He falls at his feet and he humbles himself. He never came prideful, arrogant. He came humbly before the Lord. He came in faith. You know, this man would have been very religious. And yet he knew that the religion wasn't going to help his situation. That it was Jesus Christ. Amen. And maybe this morning, someone's going to be stuck in a religion. But I also say that it's not religion that saves us, it's Jesus Christ. Amen. We're not stuck in the religion, it's Jesus Christ that we need. And Jairus knew this. That it wasn't religion. He knew about this man, Jesus, and he comes to Jesus and falls at his feet. And brothers and sisters, that's what we must do. In every situation, we must fall at Jesus' feet. We must come humbly before him and know who Jesus is. Can I say amen? amen? How do we come to Christ? How do we come to Christ? Not prideful, arrogant, not saying, Lord, you better do this or you better do that. Well, sometimes we do. But that's not how we should approach God. We should approach him humbly before the Lord. You know, James 4 and verse 6 says, He gives us more grace. That is why it says, He opposes the proud, but shows favours to the humble. He must come humbly before the Lord, brothers and sisters, before a righteous God. You know, in Mark's account, it doesn't tell you to look, but you know, in Mark's account, it says that Jairus begged him earnestly, Come and lay your hands on her, and she will be healed. So, G so, so Jairus has came to Jesus and he's begging him earnestly to come and heal his daughter. You know that Jairus had complete confidence in Jesus. Because he wasn't interested in religion. He wasn't interested in what people were thinking about him. He's coming directly to, to Jesus and confidence. Come and lay your hands on my daughter and she'll be made well. And Jesus responded by going with him. You know, for me and for you, we should come earnestly in prayer before the Lord. Every day. Every day we should come earnestly, seeking the Lord's face, have complete confidence in Jesus Christ. Praying daily. Not just once in the morning, or oh, I prayed. No, pray earnestly. Keep seeking the Lord's face, brothers and sisters. Don't give up. Keep seeking and keep knocking. And Jesus will answer. Because we serve a prayer answer in God. Can I hear the amen? amen? And if we're seeking and we're, and we're praying to the Lord, brothers and sisters, Jesus will respond. Just like he responded to Jairus. He says he went with him. And Jesus wants to go with you. With a direction that you may face that Jesus is with you. And he wants to go with you. Why? Because he loves you so much. He paid the price for us. And he wants to go with us. But sometimes we feel our situations is too big for God. I've been there. I've been there thinking, you know what, maybe this situation is too big for you, Lord, all these things. But you know, the enemy wants to come in and try and deceive us. Maybe we must just push through, brothers and sisters. Push through. You know, in, in Psalms 105, verse 4, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. And that's what we must do. Seek his face evermore. Every time. When trials come, when, 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 when a horrible tragedy happens, don't give up. Keep seeking the Lord this morning. In Jeremiah 17, verse 7, it says, Blessed is the one who puts their trust in the Lord. Whose confidence is in him. And our confidence and our trust should be in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know, how do we fully trust in someone? I had this illustration, I don't know if it was Alistair who, who shared it last time. How do we fully trust in someone? It's by spending time with that person. How do we trust in God? It's by spending time with Jesus. In prayer, reading his word, reading his promises. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The more you spend time with God, the more easier it is 
Why? Because we're relying on Jesus Christ and not ourselves. Amen. Amen. Now in verse 43, you see a situation happens. Now Jesus, at this time, he's going with giants. A situation happens. The crowd is going with them and says the crowd is pressing on them. Yet we see this woman who had a sickness for 12 years, who suffered for 12 years in suffering. You know, the, the sickness she, that she had, according to Jewish law, made her unclean. It made her isolated. If she had a husband, she'd probably have divorced her husband. Lost her family. Spent everything that she had, the Bible says, on doctors. And the, 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 just, just, she just grew worse. Can you imagine for 12 years, suffering, isolated. Now we were in lockdown for, for what was it, two years? We thought that was bad. Why in 12 years? Can't speak to anyone. And yet, she sees Jesus. And she's trying to get to Jesus Christ. She's pushing through the crowd. She's not interested on the crowd. She's not interested. She wants to get to Jesus. She's, she's pressing on. And brothers and sisters, we must press on. We must push through this morning. Whenever the holds us back, we must just push through this morning. Push through to Jesus Christ. You know, like this woman wouldn't, wouldn't even be allowed to, even to take part in the meetings. Excommunicated even from the church, basically. And yet she's trying to get to Jesus Christ. Until she sees Jesus, she's pushing through, pushing through the crowd. To get to Jesus Christ. You know, brothers and sisters, I don't know what you're going through this morning. But God does. And He wants you just to push through to Him. And keep pushing through and keep pressing on this morning. Sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it's hard. I'm not up here saying that your situations, uh, I don't know what you're going through, maybe it is hard. But it's a lot easier. When you give it over to Jesus Christ. It's a lot easier when you just give it over to Him. Because when we try and do it on our own strength. It just gets worse. Just like this woman spent everything she had. And she just grew worse. Until she met Jesus Christ. Until she gave everything over. To Jesus Christ. Can you hear Amen. You know maybe you think no one, no one sees me or. Or no one knows what I'm going through. Just like this woman. Maybe the crowd wasn't interested in this woman. Maybe the crowd didn't see this woman. Maybe she was trying to go unseen. And maybe you're in a situation you think no one sees me or, or no one knows what I'm going through. The pastor doesn't know, but maybe the doesn't know what you're going through, but God knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. Jesus knows all things. And sometimes we think, oh, as I said, our problems is bigger than God. It's not. Our God is bigger than any problem. Amen. You know, in 1 John 3, in verse, verse 20, it says, Whenever our hearts condemns us, God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. What a wonderful scripture. He knows everything that we're going through. That we can come directly to the throne of God and give all our problems and all our situations over to Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. You know, as this woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment, did Jesus just keep walking? I was wondering that. I says, you know, he's, 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 he stops the net. And he says, who touched me? I mean, the crowd was pressing on him, and, and I'm sure it was Peter. Peter says, Lord, look how many people's around you that Jesus knew that there was faith see Jesus didn't say who touched me because he didn't know Jesus knew already who it was and I believe that the reason why he says who touched me was for the woman and it was to show that it wasn't the, the garments or the clothes that healed her there was a faith in him She was completely healed. 
You know, and Jesus says a statement to this woman who suffered for 12 years. Jesus says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Jesus calls this woman daughter. To this woman, this would have been the best word she's heard in 12 years. Jesus says, daughter, your faith has made you well. She wasn't just healed physically, but she was healed spiritually. And just like me and you, when we come to Christ, we are healed physically and spiritually. Amen? Amen. You know, we were the same. Now, according to our sin, we were unclean. We had no hope and we had no future. But through Jesus Christ, we have the living hope that he cleansed us of his blood on the cross. See, we were lost. And we had no future. But Jesus Christ loves us so much that he came and died upon the cross so we could live. Now 1 Peter 2 verse 24 it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. <laughs> By his wounds you have been healed. By his wounds we have been healed through what Jesus done for me and for you. And we have that love and hope through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now in verse 49, as this is, is going on, some of them came from Jairus' house. No one says, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble this teacher anymore. No, I can't imagine what Jairus would have been thinking at this time. Maybe saying to himself, Lord, if you just left this woman alone and came with me, my daughter would be, would be alive. Lord, if, why, why are you stopping? Come on. Maybe that's what Jairus was thinking. But you know, for us brothers and sisters, we must understand that other needs is going to be met. Maybe before ours. Because I've been there before, I've been there. Lord, you're, you're healing this person, you're, you're doing this. Lord, what about my situation? What about me? What about look what I'm going through? And yet you're dealing with, with, with the hard situation, the hard situation. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged that Jesus never forgets. Jesus never forgets what you are going through and the situation you may be in. Because I've been there before, as I says. Lord, have you, have you forgot about me? Jesus never forgets about you. You're always on his mind. Now in Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8, it says the Lord, he's the, he is the one that goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear. Do not fear, brothers and sisters. The Lord goes before you. We must just trust in Jesus Christ. He knows your problems. He knows your situations, the small and whatever it may be. And the word of God tells me he goes before us. And he knows everything about us. We must just trust in the Lord. And his timing is perfect. See, we, we can be impatient. We want things now. But it's on his timing, not our time. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus hears these, these men saying, don't trouble this teacher anymore. <clears throat> you know what Jesus says to Jairus? Do not fear, only believe. <coughs> Do not fear, but only believe. You know, maybe you're going through a situation where you think it's too late. Maybe you think it's, it's, it's impossible. 
Brothers and sisters, nothing's impossible for God. Nothing's impossible for God. You know, God can bring healings to relationships. God can bring healings to broken marriages. God, God can bring healings. Whatever you're going through, addictions, problems, situations, God can heal your problem this morning. If you just put our trust and our faith upon Jesus Christ. You know, last year, my brother-in-law George was in the hospital. He's all with us, he's all been praying for him. And we went to the hospital last year. Me, Annabelle and Alistair, and we went up. You know, he was in a bad situation. And I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect when I went up to this hospital. You know, when I went into the hospital, I didn't know what was going on. You know, Annabelle was, was in a bad way, and my mother was in a bad way, and Lord says, Lord, what's going on? I says, you're in control, you need to, you need to take over. And you know, the doctor took me into this room and says, can I speak to you, speak to you for a minute? I said, I have no problem. So I went into the room, told me the situation. You know, that doctor, that doctor says basically that George had no hope. That George was finished. That George had a couple of days to live. You know what I tell that doctor? I says, that might be what you think. I says, but I'm a born again Christian. I says, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe he's a living hope. And I believe I'm going to put my hope and trust upon Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, George is still alive today. Amen. He got out of the hospital. You know, as I seen that doctor, I told that doctor, I said, you know what? I said, I'll see you tomorrow. You know, he looked at me and said, like, no. I said, yes, I will. I'll see you tomorrow. And the next day I seen him. I said, God bless you. And he was just astonished. I says, we serve a prayer on in God. But we think there's no hope. There's always hope upon Jesus Christ. Because our faith and trust is upon Jesus Christ this morning, brothers and sisters. You know, Jesus said, to the, said your daughter is not dead, but sleeping. You know, just to let me tell you that she was dead. She was. But you know, when Jesus says sleeping, it means he's going to wake, wake her back up. You know, I'm getting older now, getting fatter. I don't like to go for naps, but now I'm going for naps for the day. But you know what, as I'm going for a nap, I know I'm going to be woken up, either myself or I kick up the backside by Annabelle. But I'm going to be waking up and woke back up. And this is what Jesus means. Jesus, she's not dead, but only asleep. The girl, the girl came back alive. You know, brothers and sisters, maybe you see a dead situation, and maybe you think that's a dead situation. Jesus can kindle it back up to life. And maybe you, this morning, think to yourself that I'm in a dead situation. That, Lord, can you, can you take care of us? Through scriptures, you read the word of God. And read his promises. Yes, he can. 